supposed to do this. Uh, actually, my colleague Ulu um, uh, was supposed to have this uh, talk because he's um, actually done all the work, but unfortunately he got, he got COVID, so uh, I had to jump in. Uh, I hope I can do him justice. Um, I want to start very abstract to make it a little bit fun. Uh, what does Shutter do? Uh, it basically allows uh, users to safely reveal private information that they have to some sort of system, meaning that an attacker who um, gets hold of that information, can't abuse it or can't use it for anything malicious. Um, so basically we want to go from a world like this where we have monsters that look at, uh, in, monsters in a forest that look at your uh, private information and uh, do bad stuff with it to something like this, uh, like a more heavenly view where everything is safe and uh, nice. How do we do that? We use threshold encryption which allows uh, basically threshold encryption, uh, we have a, a set of nodes that provides a, an encryption key and then uh, a user can now encrypt their message using that, um, that key, and then it's protected from everyone. Then no one can abuse that data. And only when it's safe to reveal that information, then this network of nodes will produce the decryption key, um, and then everyone can see the message. Um, what is safe, uh, of course, depends highly on, on the application. And here we want to talk about um, voting and governance and um, this sort of stuff. Basically what we want to do here is we want to encrypt votes uh, until the voting period is over so that um, uh, voters don't uh, see uh, how, others, uh, how other people uh, voted until, yeah, uh, until uh, they can't vote anymore. This is very interesting because in DAOs, this is at the, at the moment not the case. In, in DAO voting, usually um, you see all the other votes and they can influence your decision. Um, whereas in traditional votes, like if you vote for a parliament or in an election, this is not the case. Uh, there you only start counting when uh, no one is allowed to submit votes anymore. And this is uh, very good reasons, uh, because otherwise you get some sort of, uh, lots of undesirable behaviors. For example, um, just three here, uh, voter apathy. If you see that um, um, right in the beginning, uh, a big voter uh, submitted lots of votes for candidate A, then maybe lots of people, uh, small people with only uh, small voting power uh, that would want to vote on uh, B, on candidate B might not do this because they see um, it's probably already over, um, we've lost, um, but if they would not have had this information, everyone would have voted, then they might have actually won against this one big player. And this is actually uh, a big problem um, right now in DAOs, in DAO voting. Another um, example that we might want to prevent is strategic voting. So if you, for example, if you have a vote where two candidates can win and uh, your primary candidate that you want to win already has like lots of vote. then you, votes, then you might want to vote on your secondary candidate, which is not what the voting mechanism um, is intended to encourage. So that would we also prevent if you can't see uh, what voters do. And uh, last example, um, uh, buying of votes, uh, it gets much harder if, if you don't know how many votes you have to buy in, in order to win. Out of scope is privacy, because after uh, the vote's over, everything will be public. Yeah, we're very um, um, proud to collaborate on this with Snapshot. Um, if you don't know, Snapshot is this big um, DAO voting platform. Basically, all DAOs use it. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, and since, yeah, starting today, basically, they support now Shutter as a private voting um, system. So DAOs that set up votes, they can use uh, Shutter to uh, make their votes more secure, their elections more secure. How does it work? The life cycle of a vote. Um, the shutter system starts by generating a long-lived Eon key. It does that once. Uh, and then if a user wants to vote on a proposal, they um, use that Eon key and the ID of the proposal and derive an encryption key uh, from these two pieces of data. For this, no communication is required. It can be done purely locally. Once the proposal is finished, um, basically then, yeah, the user send, encrypt their votes, send it to Snapshot, and once the proposal is finished, Snapshot will send a decryption request to the shutter system. Shutter will then generate the decryption key um, because then it is safe to reveal uh, the, the votes because no one can vote anymore. And uh, using that decryption key, Shutter uh, Snapshot can decrypt and count everything. Um, some screenshots here, how, um, how it would look like. Basically, if you set up a vote, you can select Shutter. It's purely optional. Um, if you do that, uh, during voting, you see nothing, basically. You only see the number of votes who, uh, who already uh, number of people who submitted votes already, 
you don't see how many votes Alice got, you don't see how many votes Bob got, and only in the end, um, uh, when no one can vote anymore, you will see that in this example, Alice has won and Bob didn't get any votes. Yeah, and as I said, this is uh, starting, uh, starting from today, it's live, you can uh, try it out. Um, we do have some other things uh, at, uh, at Shutter we do using this mechanism. I hinted it, that it's quite general, and it's mostly about MEV related, and since I have one and a half minutes left, I want to talk briefly about this. Basically, um, we use uh, this threshold encryption mechanism to prevent front running and malicious MEV. Our main focus here is, uh, is rollups. Um, so we, our product here is called Rolling Shutter that can integrate into uh, rollups as a kind of a, a plugin. But we're also looking at uh, beacon chain uh, at L1s. There we have, for example, a, be a beacon chain proposal, but more on the research side. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, please try it out. It's uh, it's still, of course, early. Uh, there might be bugs, but it should work. Um, it's live. Um, you can scan this QR code if you want to um, uh, try it. Uh, follow um, us on Twitter, Project Shutter, also Snapshot Labs, our collaborators, um, and Ulupe, who is um, the guy who was supposed to be here. Um, and my name is an another Yannick. Um, yeah, and of course, this is. Uh, uh, all part of BrainBot, so the company that does a shutter is called BrainBot, and we have lots of other projects, including Beamer, Raiden, Trustlines, Powdump, lots of Beamer people here. Um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Thank you. We still have time, so if you have any questions, remember that lighting talks are like seven minutes, and we have three minutes for questions, so we have our volunteers. There you go. Please, one second, because for the streaming. Thank you, Nicole. Is it... Uh is it obligatory to uh, to have the the results um, uh, shown at the end of the voting with with snapshot uh, like on a per voter basis, or do you just show the aggregate results? So in this mechanism, uh, to be honest, I don't really know what what uh, snapshot shows, but in principle, uh, all votes will be public afterwards because the encrypted votes are public and the decryption piece public, so you can um, find out who voted for what. That's part of what, why I said privacy is not in, uh, in scope of this. For this, you would need other mechanisms if you want that. One short question more. Yeah, just follow up. Uh, are, are there plans to introduce privacy in, into the setup? Um, not with this. I think threshold encryption basically ends there. I don't think it's, it's possible for this. You need some uh, heavier cryptography. Thank you. Very cool. All right. Big round of applause for Yannick. Thank you so much. Thank you.